because we are into mobility space it comes naturally to uh, us to work on something uh, uh, which which has to do with roads and road safety the response is such that none of the drivers are left uh, unemployed the immediately in, the demand is such have with us Ms. Rano Sushesta, the head of HR and from India, with an impressive 20 plus years of experience. She's an expert in strategy planning, program development, community management, and sustainability integration. She's worked with communities right at the grassroots level, as well as been a part of senior policy decision making. Under Ms. Sushesta's leadership, Bridgestone has been able to leverage their industry expertise and to, and to build in the communities of India. Ms. Sushesta, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Thanks. Pleasure is mine. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, just to begin with, you would like to understand a little bit about your personal and professional background. Uh, well, I am a de development professional. Uh, from uh, So far as my qualification is concerned, I did my master's in social work and then in CSR and sustainability. And uh, I've been uh, with various sectors uh, in the sense I started my career with uh, medical college working on health and then uh, went on to work uh, with uh, the international refugee communities in Delhi uh, for the uh, UNHCR project. Mm -hmm. uh, I also worked with uh, the rural communities in Punjab uh, for a, a heritage restoration project and then moved on, then came to uh, hardcore CSR when I joined Piki. And uh, my goal was basically to uh, you know, promote CSR and that's how I got into this space. Uh, so all through uh, my career, I've uh, been a part of CSR, CSR promotion, implementation, trainings. And uh, then of course, uh, I had the, uh, I was fortunate that I also headed uh, some of the foundations uh, for uh, quite uh, a long time. So I sort of, I would say I got the best of both the sectors, both the CSR from the uh, corporate's point of view, as well as how to manage a social entity and how, how to deliver. So hmm. that's what I am with you. All right, ma'am. And uh, can you talk a little bit about your time at Bristol and how that started? So I am going to complete uh, one year of uh, uh, in about two weeks' time, mm -hmm. last year I joined Bridgestone. An absolute delight to join this company because uh, one, uh, the kind of global perspective it brings, and second, uh, uh, I, I think as a company the processes are so well defined, and uh, also uh, the kind of commitment I, I find in this company towards CSR and sustainability uh, is absolutely delight to work with. And uh, for me, it is a new experience in the sense uh, you know, working on mobility uh, and mobility solutions. Uh, it was a new learning and uh, I, I realized that how much scope it has uh, when we talk of uh, CSR and, and the issues related to uh, smart Safe and accessible. Yeah. That's great, Now, delving into the CSR at this show, I have focused on the focus on the overarching road safety that we have designed the CSR See, I mean, if we look into the uh, growing numbers of accidents uh, that happen on roads, uh, and globally it has been a major concern uh, for the governments because it affects loss of lives and it damages the resources. And I also, uh, uh, if, you, if you look at the kind of concern organizations and bodies have shown towards this issue, that WHO in uh, 2010 actually uh, launched a decade of action uh, for road safety to reduce the number of deaths due to traffic accidents. And uh, then coming to India, if you uh, uh, have uh, gone through the reports uh, uh, of the WHO 
Global Report on Road Safety in 2018. It says that India accounts for almost 11% of the accident related to uh, road deaths, uh, accident related deaths in the world. And also in 2018, the, the data which I'm quoting, which I have the latest one, is like 467,000 road accidents happen in India. And 1,51,000 lives in pain, these accidents in pain. And uh, apart from injuring around 4,60,000 uh, lives. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of gravity of the issue. Then when it comes to Bridgestone, as a responsible organization, as well as I think because we are into mobility space, it comes naturally to uh, us to work on something uh, uh, which, which has to do with roads and road safety. So, uh, also, also our global mandate towards CSR, which is known as our way to serve, has three basic pillars. One of them is mobility, to provide safe, accessible and fun mobility to all. And that is why road safety forms a major part of our uh, CSR program. Hmm. And uh, we have very strong programs which are basically uh, based on uh, age, vulnerability and uh, stakeholder group specific programs. So uh, when we talk of pedestrian safety, we work with children, we work with elderly, with, we, we work with the general communities. Uh, also work with youth uh, uh, where we talk about uh, safety, we talk about prevention of uh, over speeding, uh, helmet, usage of helmet, violation uh, of uh, traffic uh, rules and how it affects the lives of the youth. We try to engage them uh, in road safety uh, initiatives. Then we have a very, very strong driver's uh, training program. And it's a 45 days of program which is only focused on commercial drivers uh, because if you look at Indian scenario, very few, uh, th there is no formal driver's training as such. It's, it's not a qualification. Mm -hmm. So when we, we uh, realize that by training the drivers and making them uh, responsible and, 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 you know, working on their behavioral part also, we would be able to address this issue of safety on roads. Uh, so our program is a very comprehensive program, uh, which uh, promotes a defensive driving, how to have the right attitude. Uh, uh, they need to understand the new motor vehicles uh, act and have a complete uh, understanding of how to ensure safety while driving uh, goods and people. Uh, also, we have another program where we have health camps for especially for drivers to ensure that their vision is correct. Okay. So complete vision care and, uh, and correction is, okay. is a focus just to ensure road safety uh, for others and for themselves. Yeah. Uh, and, um, a very interesting component of our program is uh, training volunteers uh, for promotion of uh, road safety. So we our uh, volunteers, including our employee volunteers, uh, who are trained by us on road safety, on how to create awareness on road safety, uh, uh, respond to uh, how to respond to accidents, how uh, defensive driving, even tire maintenance, because that that also becomes a part of uh, road safety program. So that's how it, it comes very natural to us to work on this uh, this core theme. I think that's quite a unique program, uh, you know, to focus on that kind of have an impact on road safety and work from all the different angles to ensure that uh, road safety is maintained. So that's really clear. And how is the response been from the programs and what is the impact of the program? So if, if we talk of the impact of the program, uh, we've seen that, uh, you know, uh, of the last five, six, uh, five years that uh, our focus uh, was on um, road safety and uh, recently for the last two years that we have been training the drivers, uh, the heavy commercial vehicle drivers, the response is such that none of the drivers are left uh, unemployed. The immediately, in, in, the demand is such because everybody, whosoever is employing them realizes that a trained driver uh, adds such kind of value to 
to do these mm-hmm. similarly uh, like we work very closely with the the traffic uh, and police in pune and uh, uh, the area around so uh, and and this uh, maharashtra is the only state which works with uh, school children and they have a curriculum they have a subject Road safety, and we our engagement with them is such that uh, even in this year in January we had around seven hundred children who were trained to become ambassadors for uh, uh, promotion of uh, traffic rules in twenty thousand schools. So that's the kind of uh, uh, I, I think gradually people are realizing the uh, importance of road safety program. That's wonderful to hear, ma'am. And uh, I. Talking about the current crisis that we are in, uh, I mean, COVID has definitely impacted the transport industry quite severely. So, how has it impacted your beneficiaries? What has it done to help them? Uh, our, our beneficiaries, uh, in, in the sense uh, that uh, the, yes, the truck drivers got stranded on the highways because of the sudden lockdown, where we intervened and we we ensured that they have supplies for the time that they are on the highways and. Uh, uh definitely uh, uh are uh, there are uh, our beneficiaries who are in the field uh, so we have various other programs and we try to uh, we've been uh, to raise awareness on prevention and safety measures we have been uh, conducting a lot of uh, sessions uh, apart from that we have uh, created a lot of uh, material specifically the truck drivers and the tire fitters who are a very uh, uh, you know large who form a large uh, population of our beneficiary group so for them we have uh, films made for uh, because right now it is very difficult to meet them in in person so there are uh, films that have been sent to them on awareness and how to uh, you know be safe Uh, and also for all our centers, uh, there are uh, till such uh, till about uh, four weeks back, there were no activities. But gradually, centers are coming back. For example, we have a uh, cab driver program. Uh, training program where women are uh, learning to drive, and so their practice has started. And and the norm is uh, we are following is only one person, one cab, and uh, sanitization and everything. Similarly, virtual classes have started for another program where uh, we have um, uh, entry level uh, training programs on uh, retail uh, uh, retail uh, personnel. Uh, so uh, their virtual classes have started for our drivers program drivers training program we have not yet started because uh, they are required to be in the training center for 45 days uh, and they come from far flung areas most of these uh, people are because our program is uh, totally free of cost and uh, it, it is a very very intensive program Uh, so uh, that uh, only the groundwork, like in terms of enrollment and all, has started, which which can be done on over the phone. So yeah, yeah uh, and in the communities, we are trying to sanitize the communities. We are uh, 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 a lot of uh, our women uh, cab driver trainings for uh, trainees uh, have lots of job which were they doing otherwise also. So uh, we ensured that they have ration supplies. They have so. Uh, we try to use this period to to give them all kind of support during the relief phase. Now, when we are entering into the uh, rest, we have already re- uh, entered into the restoration phase. Uh, where, for example, tire fitters. Most of the tire fitters we had trained earlier. They are uh, very much in touch with us, and they uh, had either migrated to their uh, hometowns or were, were suffering because of the loss of jobs. So. Yeah. Ensuring that they come back, we are trying to upgrade their skills. We are uh, uh, now we have started sending them upgraded tools, toolkits, along with uh, you, you know, so, so, uh, along with the uh, awareness material and, and and how to manage their their setup and how to ensure safety uh, of themselves and to the customers. So that that's how we are continuing to engage with them during the COVID, and and we would. um through our three phased intervention on covid response we are trying to uh, ensure that uh, 
at least we restore their lives in in a, in a way which can uh, be productive for them and ensure their safety. Yeah. yeah, I think that's great, ma'am, because it seems like you have left no stone unturned and uh, supported them really. I'm touch on the cab driver program for women because that seems like quite a out of the or out of the stereotype choice. If I mean, how has that experience been for you? Absolute delight. Absolutely. It, it is such a, we are doing this program in Indore hmm. and you would believe that the kind of sense of empowerment these women have and women and these are like young girls who join these, this program have generally hmm. an attitude that I don't want to do those mundane jobs, you know, that they already yeah. are the ones who are at the forefront. We've seen examples where uh, women who uh, were running either small shops or and they wanted to do something different. Hmm. That were from uh, that socioeconomic background where they couldn't have afforded, they hmm. are the ones who are coming. So generally, each and every person who has enrolled in this program hmm. is, is a, a role model. It, it, it is such a light to, to listen to them how empowered they feel. Second, it definitely uh, uh, we, we, we've got most of them are getting good jobs. This, uh, we, we were thinking that COVID might, uh, uh, you know, uh, be a problem in terms of their employment, but it, that's not the case. Uh, and uh, they are uh, getting employed by people. Which, uh, most of them are taken by uh, the hotel industry or the airlines or uh, even for um, household where uh, people prefer women cab drivers or uh, to women drivers to drive their own personal cars uh, if they have uh, children to be dropped or they have uh, parents at home so i think uh, the response from the employees are uh, uh, employer uh, is also very very uh, encouraging very encouraging and i'm also delighted to tell you that uh, from the same program as part of our restoration phase, uh, we are going to very uh, soon. We are going to launch a women-managed bike mechanics program. Okay, repairing and mechanical program. So that's again uh, that gives us a lot of uh, sense of pride and uh, satisfaction. That's, that's absolutely wonderful that you have such a positive experience with that. And uh, you are talking about the vital industry. What are certain uh, private or public sector partners that you have been able to, you know, engage with to widen the uh, of the programs? See, uh, we uh, are uh, we we always believe in collaborative and co uh, collective uh, action, hmm. and also know that uh, uh, a lot of our credibility depends on the kind of delivery we we are able to manage uh, through our programs. So. We, have, we uh, tie up with NGOs, uh, we tie up with uh, uh, training partners, we have tied up with government organizations. Uh, the focus remains on maximizing our reach, quality of training, credibility of the certification if they, they, they are certifying the program. Uh, but our preference always remains on working with partners that are specialized in that that particular skill because uh, if you look at the kind of partners that we have most of our partners are renowned they are credible and experienced in that particular skill because i, I found that the many agencies were ready to uh, you know uh, do whatever program you suggest to them we don't like that we, we only go to people who, are, who have that kind of expertise and core expertise area so that's what we do okay that's great uh, now talking about your experience as a seasoned psr professional what do you think is the biggest challenge that is facing the civic sector in general right now there is a major shift in the circumstances under which uh, uh, people used to work so people have started working from home, there are virtual uh, uh, meetings, classes, and everything. So if, if we analyze all these points, the crux is that modern and digital upskilling is required. 
a lot of people would in in this scenario would need reskilling hmm. because the sectors uh, to which they were catering are no longer the way they were hmm. people and organizations that ways uh, need to be ready to equip themselves with new technologies and new way of working simply learning one is working another thing is learning how do we learn so there are no institutes trainings in the, there is more focus on digital learning virtual classes self learning and and that will become much more more uh, popular innovation also i was just uh, reading yesterday you must have seen that as well uh, there was this um, auto rickshaw driver who has used a uh, very nice uh, uh, you know uh, hand wash station within uh, the small auto rickshaw so so how people as as service uh, providers are able to convince their customers and earn the confidence of their customers in terms of safety measures and sanitation Mm -hmm. that comes from innovation and and very uh, very sadar products products will be developed uh, which will ensure all these then but at the same time there will be a, a chunk of people generally unskilled uh, and unorganized workers who are going to suffer and bear the brunt and uh, who will be further you know marginalized towards poverty and that's where i think uh, the focus should be on um, all of us all of us uh, as as uh, supporters as people who who have programs uh, to to gear up ourselves for a collective action and collaboration to help out this segment which is going to suffer the most Definitely, ma'am. That's very insightful. And with that, uh, we are going to end our interview. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being a part of this. It was such a delight to inspire you and to hear about just how unique an intervention that you have. And I think all eyes are now on you to see, you know, where you go next, especially with your funeral delivery programs. So I wish you all the best for that, and thank you so much for being a part of this today. Thank you, Yamini, from all of us. Uh, the not only the csr team but from all of us uh, from bridge so thank you so much message ma'am